I'm Paul Bennett at Shoestring Shipyard here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located along Maine's Bowl Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. I'm going to make some boat fenders out of rope, or rope fenders. But before I do, I just wanted to go over a couple of things that I'm going to make first. Now this is a very simple jig. It's very simple. Scrap piece of wood, some dowels spaced apart about 15-16 inches or so, a few marks where I'm going to use the rope splicing fit and tape some of the rope together to hold it before I start tying knots. This is not absolutely necessary. You don't need one of these jigs to make a rope fender, but if you want to make a number of rope fenders and you want to make them all uniform, exact same size so they all look you know, uniform, it helps to make a jig. The other thing, you'll see that you see this uh, chain here with a shackle and it's got a swivel and a little carabiner hook on the end. I suspended this from one of the rafters in the overhead. And the idea of the swivel is, is when you're tying the knots and you're turning the rope fender around while you're tying the knots, if you don't use a swivel, what's going to happen is this chain would just start binding up and then it would start walking upwards and it would no longer be in a comfortable position. That's the only reason I did this and that's simple enough. I took a piece of 3 8 inch uh, pot wop from my metric friends. It's around 9 millimeter, a little over 9 millimeter I think. This is actually new. For my larger boat fenders, I'll be using a lot of used stuff, old stuff that's being thrown out. But this is leftover inventory, so I'll just use it for making some small fenders. And this will be for the dinghy. And so what I did is I took a length about 15 feet long. I just doubled it in half. See, that's all. I'm putting it in this jig just simply like that. Nothing fancy. Okay. Now I have another piece, and this is also about 15 feet long. I'm now going to use this rope splicing fit. Where I have a paint mark right here, I'm going to unravel this rope just a little bit, and I want to get this fit started in one strand. This thing's really tight. Once I get this started, just going through, separating it so I get the fit through one strand. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And you don't, if you don't have a fit, you could do this with a screwdriver, you know, something of that nature. But the fit will make it just a little bit easier. And I've seen this done using natural rope and it seems to be a little bit easier than this stuff here. This stuff's pretty tough. Doesn't want to unwind very well. But uh, I think I can get it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put that back in. So you can see I have the fid lined up with that mark that I made. I'm gonna put it through a little bit more. And here's where the fit comes in handy. I'm going to take this line here, the other one, and I'm going to put it through like this. See? And then I'm going to again find out where the center is, I'm going to even it up. Okay, right there is the center, and then I'm going to pull the fit out, like so. And now, the two lines are now four lines down at the bottom, 
as you can see here, I'm just laying them in there. I'm going to sort them out, make it a little bit tidier. As I said, you don't need to make this jig. This is just what, when you're going to make a number of these and you want them all uniform and the same size, that's why you use the jig because uh, they all come out the same, same measurement. This is where I'm going to tape it. And I'm just going to wrap this together. A little bit of tape. And that's all I need to do. Now I no longer need the jig. Okay, this I can set aside. See, so I'll have the eye and I'll have the tape all at the same measurement. And I'm just going to slip it in the carabina. And by the way, if I wanted to make a larger or thicker uh, boat fender using the same line, I can add more strands and just lay the strand, straight strands about seven and a half feet in here and just tape it in there just below the below the eye here uh, just to hold it in place and you'll see what I'm doing. I've got four strands. I'm making just a little loop here that's for guidance. I've actually switched to a natural fiber, a manila a rope because the pot wop I was using even though it's old in terms of age it hasn't been used and so it's still too slippery anything polyester, dacron, that kind of thing uh, if it's not used, it's it's much too slippery. The knots don't hold. If this were used, it was all roughened up and, and the, uh, the rope was all frayed. It, the rope, the knots would stick just fine. But uh, so I switched over to this natural fiber. Same size, it's 3 8 inch or maybe a little over 9 millimeter. We're going to try this again because this will stick. You have four strands and it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'll take the first one, I'm going to make a little bit of a loop that I'm going to hold, like so. The first line goes over the second line. The second line goes over the third line. The third line goes over the fourth line. The fourth line goes through the loop that you're holding. The fourth line goes through the loop. In other words, each line just goes over the other. And then, once that is done, then you have to start tightening it up. And you have to work them all. Essentially, what I'm doing here is, um, it's sort of a, I guess you'd call it a crown knot. And what I have to do is I have to get them all tightened up evenly. Once I have that done, um, I'm just going to repeat it. Just taking the time to work them all together, one by one, getting them all tight. And if you have one that's loose, then that messes everything up. Okay, what's it look like under here? Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to look, just like that. Pull it through and back, through and back, through and back, through and back. Okay, I got that fairly well tight. So now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to take this one, the first one, and go over the second. The second is going to go over the third. And the third is going to go over the fourth. And the fourth is going to go through my loop. I just start getting them all even, tightened up, pull through, and tighten them up. And of course, I have not done this a lot and I'm not very well practiced at it, so it takes me a while. Uh, there are guys that can really blow through this very, very quickly, very fast. And they can do a, a, an entire fender in just a matter of moments. And it takes me some time. Okay, I'm starting to get them all even now. Just pulling through. It's just, I'm repeating, I'm repeating the, the process, the very first process. 
a little bit of a loop, one over two, two over three, three over four, four through the loop. And so now I've done that twice, but I just don't think I'm tight enough right now. So you just have to keep working it to get it good and tight. That's part of the key. Okay, so I'm at that point and now I'll do a third row. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my little loop. And I'm gonna say, okay, that's, that's one over two, two over three, three over four, and four through my loop. Okay, and now I can start getting everything worked out, tightened up each one. Keep working it as I work my way up. And of course this is third row. And I'm just trying to get it all tight and even. And I need a lot more practice at doing this. But it is working. It just takes me a while. It just takes time. So you can see how that's knotted up and I'm working my way up. You gotta put some effort into it. No free lunch here. Okay, so now I'm ready to do another row. I'm gonna do a few rows, I'm gonna work my way up and then I'll come back a little later so you don't have to sit through the whole thing because it's just a repeat of every step, the same step over and over and over again. Well, as you can see, I'm still at it. And I'm using the same procedure. I'm making my little loop here. This is the first one. I put it over the second. The second goes over the third. The third goes over the fourth. The fourth goes back through the loop that I'm holding on to. And then, once again, I have to go around and I have to keep working these lines, getting them all cinched up tight. The whole secret to this is making sure that each row is super tight before you start the next one. So I'm working at it little by little, one by one, work your way around. You have to get it as tight as you can. And that's how it all stays together. Just four lines. And you can do multiple lines, not just four. It's the same procedure, you just have extra lines and you're looping around. And that'll make even a, a, a thicker, you know, a larger diameter fender, as well as using heavier line. Like this is three eighths, I could use half inch, or I could even use five eighths. For my metric friends, I could use instead of the nine millimeter, I could be using 12 millimeter or larger. So I'll do another loop. Hold on to that little loop. So the first one goes over the second. The second goes over the third, the third goes over the fourth, the fourth goes through my loop. And go around one by one, pull all these tighter, start reeling them in so I can snug them up. Take your time, don't try to rush it so you can get them all all good and tight and snug and you know, I'm just holding it on onto it here and keep it from getting away from me. And right now that's it's working out. They're all going together the way they're supposed to. Alright. And ready for another row. So I'm gonna turn off the camera now. I'll come back when I get it pretty up pretty much uh, at the top and then I'll finish it off for you. Okay, I've got the top row about where I want it. I could probably do another row but I tell you my wrist, my arms, my hands are all worn out and I'm not used to doing this. So I'm just going to take it off the carabiner. So now I just have to finish these ends. I'm going to take the fed for this one here. I'm going to put it down through. Go down through the next layer. I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it through this way, 
to the top. Try to pull that tight. I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to do it the same thing on all of these. Sometimes it's hard to get it in there because you get everything tight, which it needs to be. Sometimes you can help the fit out a little bit, get a screwdriver or something. I should have put a, uh, a better point on the fit when I made it, because this is pretty tight. There we go, got it now. Oh, my battery's low, I'm gonna have to recharge. I'll finish tucking these through and I'll be back. I've got these all pulled up tight now. I'm just going to cut off these ends. I'm not going to worry about whippings on the ends because these are in there pretty tight and I don't think they're going to pull out. And I've been assured that they won't or that they don't. So I'll take the word of the guy who uh, told me about it and I'll try it just like this. Okay, we have a fender, we're good to go.